All right. Um, all right. Like I said, uh, I haven't had a chance to read the books. Have you read the books yourselves? I have not read all of these books. I've read excerpts from these books, and they're made available at a website called ratedbooks.org. Uh, there's a lot of parent organizations throughout the state that have actually used this website to compile these books and identify what schools that they are in. And that is part of the problem because the school districts themselves don't seemingly have a great process or policy in place that allows one to see uh, the books and which books have been challenged, um, where they've been challenged. They have actually are requiring parents to challenge them by school instead of district-wide, uh, which I, I think is really problematic because then it puts the onus on the parents to go out, do all the legwork, find the book, put it in front of their committee uh, to determine whether or not it's, it's a violation, and then it's only taken out per school. And I use the analogy, you know, if we had a, a drug dealer pushing drugs at multiple schools within a district, we wouldn't just ban that person from that school. It would be the entirety of the district. That's what needs to happen here. When it comes to reading excerpts of the book, uh, I can imagine there'd be some people who would say that might not be a fair way to um, interpret the book as a whole. Um, so when you, you say you've read ec excerpts of the books, what kind of uh, content are you talking about that you've seen? Yeah, and, and let me also qualify by saying that parents, I've, I've heard from so many different parents that have taken a look at these books themselves. I mean, I, I just received one recently on Facebook message that showed areas of the book that are highly, highly uh, pornographic. And so this isn't just me saying, uh, yeah, I've taken a look at some excerpts. These are, this is driven by parents, parents whose kids are forced to read this material that clearly violates the law. And if you look at House Bill 374 that Representative Ken Ivory passed, it's very clear as to what the definition of pornographic and inappropriate materials is. The material that you, you use the word pornographic, there might be other people that might think to themselves, well, I've read it, it doesn't seem pornographic to me. And that could be what the crux of this is. Uh, kind of like when people say a certain comedian is offensive, and I've heard the same bit, and I thought, well, I thought it was hilarious. Is it a situation where maybe parents are thinking, well, it's offensive to them, but it doesn't necessarily violate the law? I think I'd encourage everybody to go to that website, take a look at the excerpts yourself. I think you would find as a TV journalist and putting on this, these materials couldn't even be aired on your TV program. They couldn't. If you went and looked at the vast majority, especially those that are rated four out of five or five out of five in terms of their explicitness, I, I doubt that you could even put it on the news here tonight and air it yourself. Um, and that's, that to me is, is very problematic. I mean, if we, if we can't air it on the six o'clock news, then how can kids in middle school, especially uh, in high school, why should they be able to uh, read these books and even be forced through their teachers to read this type of material? Are we talking specific sex acts or what are we, without getting too graphic, yeah. is that what we're talking about in these books? Uh, there's, it, it meets the definition of pornography pursuant to 76-10-1227. That's the, the HB 374, that's part of it. Um, and yeah, there are, uh, there are acts, there are uh, just, you know, just vulgarities in these books that I feel, and, and not just me, but again, these parents that have been reaching out and feel unheard. Uh, that's the thing. I've been, I've been after this for a year, for an entire school year. Um, but they just, they just don't feel like they've been, um, they've been heard. And uh, this, this started back in, I'm sorry, can you ask the question again? What was the? Was it, uh, you know, are these uh, specific sex acts uh, that you're seeing in, the, in these books that are causing the, causing the concern? Or is it yeah. just maybe, is, is it something not quite as graphic? Yeah. Well, I, I, th I think that these materials are pretty graphic. Again, if you were to go look at them yourselves, um, this is something that parents have forwarded to me. And uh, it's been starting, you know, uh, for the past year or so that I've been hearing. In fact, I'm, I'm optimistic. I really approached the school board meeting on Tuesday night with that plea that we have worked together. The city and the school district has worked together in the past. Um, when I first was elected mayor, my very first year, I convened a school safety roundtable in the summer of 2018. It was the first time that it had ever been done. We invited every principal of every school, school administration, 
and also school board members to participate. And we identified that we needed more school resource officers. And so our city stepped up right away and we actually had, we actually had more school resource officers committed to schools within our, our city boundary. And we also talked about the needs of uh, the mental health needs of our students. Again, we ended up saying, look, I know that the city doesn't set the curriculum and we don't fund the schools, but these are our kids. I have my two kids in Jordan School District schools. We care about them. As a mayor, I think it's my number one job to look out for the safety of all of our residents. That includes our students. And so we've, we talked about ways in which the city can help. We added more school resource officers. We added events the city did around mental health, trying to destigmatize, um, you know, mental health issues, and really opening the conversation as a community. This situation with inappropriate materials in school is as big an issue as the physical and the mental uh, safety health of of our students, and I think it needs to be addressed. And we brought it up at the school safety roundtable last September. We followed it up with an email to um, administration and copied in board members, and I didn't even get a response until January. And it was in January where he said, well, let's meet. Um, and we still today have not had any meeting around this. And I know the school district has set their policy on how to protest these types of materials. Um, it's really the first year I think that it's been implemented. But again, I was going to that school board meeting with an appeal. We've worked together in the past. We can do it again on a very, very serious um, issue that I, I don't feel has gotten the attention it deserves. You mentioned that you don't, in, um, let me phrase that again. You mentioned you don't enforce books in the library, the school district does. Do you have any actual authority to, to tell them which books they can have and which ones they can't? Uh, well. I believe that with, if, if there are violations of state law, absolutely. Our police department has jurisdiction, right, within, um, within our municipal borders. And if, uh, I, I hope it never gets to that, but you know, if, if we get to a point where materials uh, are violating the law, then the city absolutely has authority um, to, to weigh in there. It's the parents that are first and foremost are paramount. That is, that is who I'm hearing from. I'm hearing from these parents. And, and they say, look, Mayor, I, my kid has been forced to read this material as part of their curriculum, or these books are made available, widely available in schools. Um, this is not material that's appropriate. Like I said, you couldn't even air it on the six o'clock news. <laughs> it, it shouldn't be available in schools. We should get that out of the schools. That's what I'm hearing from parents and I want the parents to know that I've got their back. When it comes to the process of getting rid of certain books, I did, I did get a little bit of communication from the district mm -hmm. and basically they say that the, the following a process outlined in their policy, the book review committees that do involve parents, they have chosen to remove some books, they've challenged books and they've kept some others. Mm -hmm. um, I guess the question is, why not just let the district go about their way of doing it so they can determine which books are offensive and which ones are not? Well, the district is going about their way of doing it. And I'm continuing to hear from parents that these that materials that clearly um, violate, violate the bright line policy, right, that the state or the vi violate state law are still in, in these libraries. Um, and I, I, I I think it's problematic, again, the issue that I'm hearing is that the policy requires, it puts the onus on parents. Parents, I mean, this material, why, we should be, we should be having the conversation, of why are these materials even admitted to, in schools to begin with? Why does it take, why does it take a parent to uh, look at the material that their kids are assigned to read or material that they're able to find and identify that as, uh, as an issue? and then bring it up to the school. I, I would, we have technology today that should be able uh, to, to examine these books and materials before they're even placed in libraries and can tell whether or not they violate, uh, they violate the law. So right now the onus is all on the parents. Um, it has to be 
uh, challenged per school. And again, the analogy I use is why, why would we do that? We, it should be eliminated if it's not, if it, if it violates the law, and it's, it's a problem for one school, it should be district wide. I can already hear your critics that would, would say something to the effect of if you haven't read the books, you might not have the full picture of what the book is about and the context. I mean, we can take excerpts out of, say, the Bible or the Book of Mormon, and they might be considered offensive to some, to, to some people, might even involve, say, sexual, uh, things of a sexual nature. So when it comes to uh, reading the books entirely, do you think that that's something that maybe more parents should do? Or, I mean, do you think it's a fair just to get like just an excerpt and say the entire book is problematic because of whatever excerpt is found? Again, if you couldn't air any of those excerpts, I mean, irrespective of the total volume, you know, the whole, the, the, the complete piece of work, if you couldn't air certain segments of it on your news, why should it be made available to minors? I think that's to, to those critics, let's say, assuming there are some, um, if, if there are critics that are saying that, then I think that's the standard that needs to be used. Uh, it's uh, these, you, you can view for yourself the, these excerpts and uh, the summaries, and I think it's a clear, it's, it's a clear line. You know, there, there are some ratings that are in the lower one to two range, but anything north of a three out of five, four or five out of five, the MPA rating system, uh, that is something that clearly isn't, isn't appropriate. That's for, when it gets start, for starts to get pretty graphic. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, uh, well, again, that's kind of all I can think of to say about this. Uh, any questions that you can think of, Eddie? Did you receive any cl uh, complaints for anything other than sexual content, maybe violence or profanity? Um, most of it was sexual in nature, but um, I know that the law also covers um, violence and say the mas masochistic type of behavior. Uh, so, but that, that was most, I think, I think the thing that I want to convey again is that the school district, the city has worked successfully with the school district to improve the safety of our students with respect to their physical safety and their mental health. And here's Here's a situation that the state of Utah has gotten very aggressive on, I think rightfully so. You know, they admitted, uh, or they, they called out in 2016, pornography as a public health crisis. It really is, it creates such a toxic environment, it's incredibly damaging uh, to kids, and this is not something that we should tolerate, it really isn't. And so I wanna work with the school district, as we have in the past, to successfully get these materials out of school uh, that, that clearly violate the law and are inappropriate for minors. Okay.